Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Thursday, August the 27th. Today is the commemoration of Monica, the mother of St. Augustine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Give the King your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the royal Son. May he judge your people with righteousness, and your poor with justice. Let the mountains bear prosperity for the people, and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. May they fear you while the sun endures, and long as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may the righteous flourish, and peace abound till the moon be no more. Our Old Testament reading today is from 1 Kings chapters 9 and 10. As soon as Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord in the king's house and all that Solomon desired to build, the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time, as he had appeared to him as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. And the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your plea with which you have made before me. I have consecrated this house that you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. And as for you, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, with integrity of heart and uprightness, doing according to all that I have commanded you, and keeping my statutes and my rules, then I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever, as I promised to David your father, saying, You shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. But if you turn aside from following me, or you or your children, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes that I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land that I have given them, and the house that I have consecrated for my name I will cast out of my sight, and Israel will become a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And this house will become a heap of ruins. Everyone passing by it will be astonished and will hiss, and they will say, Why has the Lord done this to the land and to this house? Then they will say, Because they abandoned the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them and served them. Therefore the Lord has brought all this disaster on them. Now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind, and Solomon asked, answered all her questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his cupbearers, and his burnt offerings that he offered the house of the Lord, there was no more breath in her. And she said to the king, The report was true that I heard in my own land of your words and your wisdom, but I did not believe the reports until I came and my own eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told to me. Your wisdom and prosperity surpassed the report that I have heard. Happy are your men, happy are your servants, who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who has delighted in you and set you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loved Israel forever, 
he has made you king, that you may excite justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king one hundred twenty talents of gold, and a very great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again came such an abundance of spices as these that the queen of Sheba gave to Solomon. Moreover, the fleet of Hiram, which brought gold from Ophir, brought from Ophir a very great amount of almond wood and precious stones. And the king made of the almond wood supports for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, also lyres and harps for the singers. No such almond wood has come or been seen to this day. And King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all that she desired, whatever she asked besides, was given to her by the bounty of King Solomon. So she turned and went back to her own land with her servants. And our writing this morning is from St. Augustine, uh, talking about his mother Monica. Monica was brought up in modesty and sobriety. She was made by you obedient to her parents, rather by them to you. When she reached marriageable age, she was given to a man and served him as lord. She tried to win him for you, speaking to him of you by her virtues, through which you made her beautiful, so that her husband beloved, so that her husband loved, respected, and admired her. She bore with his infidelities and never had a quarrel with her husband on this account, for she looked forward to your mercy coming upon him, and hoped that as he came to believe in you, he might become chaste. Another gift which you endowed that good servant of yours in whose womb you created me, my God, my mercy, was that whenever she could, she reconciled dissident and quarreling people. She showed herself so great a peacemaker that when she heard from both sides many bitter things, Monica would never reveal one, never reveal to one anything about the other unless it might help to reconcile them. At the end, when her husband had reached the end of his life and time, she succeeded in gaining him for you. After he was a baptized believer, she had no cause to complain of his behavior, which she had tolerated in one not yet a believer. She was also a servant of your servants. Any of them who knew her found much to praise in her, held her in honor, and loved her, for they felt your presence in her heart, witnessed by the fruits of her holy way of life. She had testimony to her good works. She had brought up her children, enduring travail as often as she saw them wandering away from the Lord. By your gift you allow me to speak for your servants, for before her falling asleep we were bound together in community in you, after receiving the grace of baptism. She exercised care for everybody as if they were all her own children. She served all as if she was a daughter to all of us. A native of North Africa, Monica, born A.D. 333, uh, died in the year 387, was the devoted mother of St. Augustine. Throughout her life, she sought the spiritual welfare of her children, especially that of her brilliant son, Augustine. Widowed at a young age, she devoted herself to her family, praying many years for Augustine's conversion. When Augustine left North Africa to go to Italy, she followed him to Rome and then to Milan. There she had the joy of witnessing her son's conversion to the Christian faith. Weakened by her travels, Monica died at Ostia, Italy, on the journey she had hoped would take her back to her native Africa. On some churchier calendars, Monica is remembered on May the 4th. And we now join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, true King of heaven and earth, you promised to your church that the gates of hell would not prevail against her, and you still cause your word to be preached and your holy sacraments to be administered among us. But ah, O Lord, the sins of your people obscure the majesty of your bride. Your holy vineyard is trampled and your blessed sacrifice stands neglected. Many think themselves strong and despise the life-giving food that you have ordained for your people for the forgiveness of their sins. Pardon all our arrogance, and do not come to us in wrath to remove the lamp of your word from before your eyes. O Lord, we pray you, visit this vine which you once established for yourself, and renew us with the sun of your mercy and the water of eternal life. Give us a great hunger for the food of your true body and blood, and let all your faithful people ever be found in the apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of your bread, and in the prayers. We implore you, O Lord, for our altar, that it may ever be a place where the medicine of eternal life, the forgiveness of our sins, strengthens us in body and soul, that disbelief and impenitence may stay far from all who come there, so that they may not eat and drink to their own judgment. O eternal High Priest, let the fruit of your Spirit grow in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and chastity. Cause us to live in holy conduct toward one another to the glory of your holy name, here in time and hereafter in eternity. For you live and reign with the Father and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you strengthened your patient servant Monica through spiritual discipline to persevere in offering her love, her prayers, and her tears for the conversion of her husband and of Augustine, their son. Deepen our devotion to being other, our devotion to being others, even our own family, to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.